Hey, what's up? It's Jake. Uh, I'm here to finish the remote state section of this little series um, talking about Terraform remote state as a data source. So I'm actually not going to demo this. I just want to talk about it really quick and then move on um, only because I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> so I've, I've kind of approached Terraform with a very open mind, wanted to see what can I do with it and not like what I don't like about it. But in this particular case, I'm actually going to stop and say, hey, don't do this. So Terraform remote state, basically the idea behind it is if I have um, in my code, I'll show you, I have um, a remote state for my database. So this is all saved in S3, um, but I also have remote state for my web server. And my web server, um, if I wanted to grab like a, a database endpoint, for example, and pass that to my web server as a way to grab information, um, instead of using a variable from uh, my separate file, what I can do is I can actually read the remote state file of my database to grab information out of it. So how you would do that is um, you would you would set, let me see if I have one here for you that you can see. Um, I can set my outputs um, like as a DB address and my DB port I'm using as an example. And when you create an output, this output value, these both these output values get stored in your state file and they get stored as plain text. So one of the first reasons I think this is a bad idea is if you try to store something like a database password, even if you export it as a local environment variable, um, that, and then you pass that environment variable to your Terraform plan, it's going to get stored in plain text in your state file. So ideally, you're, you're, if you're doing remote state with S3, you know, you have your bucket encrypted and your objects are encrypted, but one mistake um, is all it takes. And then you're going to have all your stuff in plain text. And anybody with access to that bucket has access to all of your sensitive information in plain text. So that's strike one. Um, but yes, yeah, so the idea is I could I could tell my web server in the in, in code here, I could say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to create a data source using Terraform remote state. OK, and I'm going to name it DB and I say it has a backend to S3. Here's the bucket. This is where the state file lives and then say, hey, go ahead and create. Um, I'm going to create a template for my user data and I'm going to grab these variables. I'm going to set these variables and I'm going to grab the database address from this Terraform remote state output. And then when I and then when I create this uh, shell script, I can just start passing variables. Um, and then it'll pull them in and you can use them. I, I don't think you should do that and neither does HashiCorp because if you look at um, immediately they give you alternate ways because it says um, it's convenient as drawbacks, it exposes output values, you have to have access to the entire snapshot which includes some sensitive information and when possible they recommend explicitly publishing data for external consumption to a separate location instead of accessing it via remote state. And then they give you a number of ways to do that with different cloud providers. So ultimately, <laughs> they're saying, hey, we have this thing and you can use it, but we don't recommend that you do. So I'm not going to recommend that you do either. Uh, but that's that's what it is. That's what you can do with it. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to build anything with it. But And you kind of saw how I did it. But here's they've got example usages for remote and local backends. And that's pretty much it. So. <laughs> That's going to do it for the uh, remote state section of this learning path or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's a, some holes that I want to fill before I move on. Um, we've gone over infrastructure's code, managing infrastructure. We didn't really go over uh, refresh only. I kind of talked about it a little bit or upgrade providers, CRUD. Um, or in provisioners, so I might go over this a little bit along with, we went over master the workflow, but we didn't go over some of the subcommands like taint um, or import. We didn't talk about refractor monolith. So I'm going to make a short section on uh, Terraform workflow and go over a couple subcommands and some of the uh, infrastructure management stuff before we move on to modules. So that will be the next section. Hopefully it won't be too long and then we'll get into modules. 
Um, at this point, what we've basically covered is the first three chapters of Terraform Up and Running 2 and the first half of the study guide for Terraform Associate Certification. Um, I've also gone over some exam objectives and just making sure that, okay, we covered this, we covered this, we covered this, um, and just kind of going over every single thing. Um, so at this point, um, we're going to go over this section, this fourth section in, uh, in the next part of this, which will be section three, if you're looking at my YouTube videos, before I go over modules. So what we have left is just finish up CLI, and then we'll do modules, some workflow, which we've really already gone over all of this already. Um, uh, we already went over state. We've uh, So then we'll start going over some more config and enterprise capabilities. And then with uh, Terraform up and running too, um, we're going to go over reusable infrastructure with modules. We'll do some loops, if statements, things like that, some some kind of code stuff, zero downtime things. Um, and then how to set this up for production and then collaborating with Terraform. And, and then that should be it. Then that will have taken you through the Terraform Up and Running 2 book, plus all of the certification objectives, plus all of the study guide um, stuff. This isn't necessarily centered around getting certified, but I'm going to go over all the materials. So um, I'm going to try to take the test after this and um, I'm not using study guides. I'm just using this um, uh, kind of journey that I'm going on. And I'll take the test at the end and tell you whether or not this was enough to pass. So uh, this is being recorded on Halloween. So happy Halloween. And uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. But if not, I'll see you in the next one.